What does a catalyst do? It speeds up a reaction. Speeds up a reaction. And what, what makes it a catalyst? It's not yeah, so it, it speeds up the reaction and itself is not consumed in the reaction. There are all sorts of things you can add to a reaction to make it go faster, but unless you can get it back or unless it's regenerated in the process, it's not a catalyst. Um, and so we typically think of you know, chemical reactions. You have molecules that are kind of just bouncing around. And they, you know, whether there's a reaction or not, you have molecules, they're moving around, they're hitting each other, they're hitting into the walls of whatever flask they're in, and it's just kind of this random mosh pit. And for you to have a reaction, you need to have molecules hit in exactly the right way. Uh, and you know, they're bumping into each other all the time. Say there's a one in a million chance that two molecules will hit in just the right way. That's actually really good odds because molecules are bumping into each other about a billion times a second. So that react about a million times per second if it's one in a million chance. Um, so in, in reality, the, you know, the chance that of having a productive reaction when the molecules bump into each other is way less than one in a million. Catalysts, uh, well, so before catalysts, you can increase the rate of a reaction by heating it. Basically all that does is it makes the molecules move faster, so they bump into each other more often and they bump into each other harder. Um, so this can speed up the reaction rate just by having them interact more frequently, or there are some reactions where you need, there's a certain amount of energy required. You know, you have to break a bond first and that takes energy. And so you need the molecules to hit each other hard enough so if it's room temperature, there might be a reaction that would take 20 million years to, to reach completion. But if you heat it up to 120 degrees, it's done. And that's just because the molecules are hitting each other hard enough that they can actually do the chemistry that's involved. So what do catalysts do? They can do multiple things, but I'm going to break it down into basically two tasks that a catalyst can do. And some ca catalysts do only one and some do both. They can increase the frequency that molecules uh, interact. So a lot of what enzymes do in your body is rather than just waiting around for molecules to hit each other randomly, a catalyst will actually collect the different reactant molecules and bring them together and put them in the right position so they can react and go on. And this can actually increase the reaction rate you know, a millionfold easily just by getting the molecules in the right place at the right time. Um, this is especially true, you know, most reactions are just two molecules hit each other. There are some reactions that require three or four molecules to be in exactly the right arrangement. And if you think about the statistics of that happening randomly, the chances are essentially nil that you're going to get four molecules in exactly the right place and position at the right time, unless you have something that's bringing them and putting them all in the right place at the right time getting the reaction to happen, and then kicking out the product and ready to start again. So catalysts can also uh, increase reaction rate by, um, you know, even if the molecules are just randomly bumping into each other, if they either don't have the energy or there's just some, you know, reactions are moving bonds and atoms and electrons around. And if things are just left to chance, sometimes they don't end up in the right place or, you know, it just it doesn't necessarily work out right. So a catalyst can also just, you know, given that two molecules interact, the catalyst can increase the probability that that reaction happens. So if you can change your million, you know, one in a million chances of every collision, if you can change that to every time the you know, molecules come into contact, there's a 50-50 chance that they do the reaction. Your reaction's gonna go way, way faster. So I have, before I talk too much more about catalysis, I wanna have some demonstrations so you have kind of an idea about what we're talking about. Um, this is just some flasks. There's a little bit of water in the bottom of this one. I washed them last night, didn't have time to dry. Um, but so I'm doing, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, if I can. It's okay. So the reaction that I'm going to be doing is 
decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to water, oxygen. Can also draw this out. So hydrogen peroxide, this molecule here. Oxygen-oxygen bond is very weak. Oxygen is very electronegative. It really wants electrons, and it doesn't like sharing. When it's bonded to oxygen, it has to share. And so this bond is really weak. Now, in molecular oxygen, they have to share as well, but there's a double bond between the oxygens, so it's a lot stronger. So this hydrogen peroxide is unstable. Water is very unstable, or sorry, water is very stable. So hydrogen peroxide unstable, water stable. Oxygen, fairly stable, but unstable enough that you can breathe it and live. And, you know, like we, we break down oxygen to survive. So it's not that stable. So this reaction generates a fair amount of heat as it goes, but that doesn't mean that it just happens spontaneously, necessarily. So um, I have a bottle of hydrogen peroxide here. It says 30% on the label. It's not quite 30%. It's about 20% now. You can kind of see it looks like soda. There are some bubbles on the side of the bottle. This is just it slowly decomposes. We keep the bottles in the freezer so that the reaction happens as slowly as possible. But it still decomposes. It releases oxygen slowly. Um, you can heat this up to a boil, and it'll decompose explosively. You don't want to do that. Also, light can make the reaction go faster. That's why if you go to the pharmacy and buy a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, it's in a dark bottle. It's because light actually breaks it down. Now, the stuff you get in the pharmacy is about 3%, maybe 10% if you're using it to bleach your hair. I don't know if anyone's used peroxide for that. Uh, I haven't, but I've heard it really hurts. Um, this is 30%, which is why I'm wearing gloves, a lab coat, safety goggles. Um, but basically, there are catalysts that will make this reaction go millions or billions of times faster than it does just at room temperature. And so I have... Just so you have an idea when we're talking about substoichiometric sub amounts, I have about 10 milligrams of three different catalysts. So you have a white powder, a yellow powder, and a black powder. The yellow powder is iron chloride. The white powder is sodium iodide. So we have... And the black powder is manganese dioxide. So about 10 milligrams of each of the catalysts, I'm going to put 15 milliliters or approximately 15 grams of this solution in each of these flasks. Now the solution is only about a quarter hydrogen peroxide, but it's still several grams of hydrogen peroxide to uh, 0.01 grams of catalyst. Here, I'm going to add iron chloride to one of these flasks. You can see the solution turns dark. Nothing really is happening, though. You know, it just looks, looks kind of brown. Maybe some little bit of fizz in there. You can see some tiny little bubbles. So this catalyst actually has a pretty substantial induction period. So the iron chloride itself is not the catalyst. It's a pre-catalyst, and it takes a little while for it to react. So that guy's going. We'll check in on him a little bit later. Sodium iodide. This one is nice. We have this white powder. It's going to dissolve in this clear solution. Instantly, it turns yellow. The actual catalyst is yellow. 
And we can see this is actually fizzing pretty substantially. Manganese dioxide, the last catalyst, should be a little more active than that. You can see it's basically just as soon as we add it, it's decomposing. So here we have comparison, three different catalysts of the same amount. We have not so good, pretty good, and this is going really fast. Well, we can also talk about the, uh, you know, if we increase the amount of catalyst that's in any of these reactions, we're going to increase the rate.